Wow, wow. Yeah, but um, what a stadium. Awesome place, eh? Uh, yeah, home of the Sharks. So great to be here, great to train here, and best match days. Best match days, I mean, <laughs> this place has got water slides. Um, you were saying to me that you, it was nice to actually walk through. It was nice to actually walk through um, this incredible entertainment area um, to our left over here. Swimming pool, some beach sand, um, incredible for the fans. And I think um, you love your fans. You know, you've taken to the Elizabeth nickname um, really wonderfully. We've watched the podcasts and everything. And um, it must be such a special place to play. You've played in some amazing stadiums all around the world, but this one here, Kings Park, I mean, how's the feeling for you? Yeah, no, I'm a Louisville. Like I said, it's the first time here, here at the back, uh, behind the poles. Uh, we always want to walk past here and do that, that lack of honor. Mm -hmm. um, we see people calling us here to down a beer. <laughs> I know they, they should have a party here, but no, it's a great, great, uh, yeah, like you said, stadium. And to play this match here, also incredible. Mm. At Full Kings Park is, is exceptional. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And um, speaking about those fans, far from home in the Challenge Cup final, um, all the South Africans will be backing you, of course. Even the expats that are in, in London, you had an incredible semi final out there on the stoop, 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 we'll call it the stoop. You know, um, are you expecting a huge turnout that side? Um, how, what's the challenge of playing in a final so far from home? First South African side to make the Challenge Cup final. Um, so all the South Africans will be watching. How's the feeling for all the players? Yeah, I think, um, well, we're not expecting anything much of, of, uh, regarding fans. Uh, hopefully we'll see a couple of South Africans there. Uh, but um, I think the guys are excited to play in the final. Uh, I think it's a big thing for, for the Sharks to, to be in the final. Um, but it, will only, um, it doesn't help, it's just a big thing to be in the final. We we'll obviously kick on from that. Uh, we know Gloucester will be a great team uh, to play against and, and they'll have their plans but yeah we're really excited and I mean lots of young guys in the team that's never played in the final so it's going to mm. be a good challenge for us. Yeah no um, definitely I'm um, speaking of guys in the team as well Sia Masuk with the magician I mean, with all of the um, tabloids around the world talking about him but um, you're in the tight five you're a, a lock forward you know a number four lock how does it feel being in the engine room having a player like him at, at number 10 especially when he hasn't been in the squad for so long you know yeah, he's, he's been incredible. Uh, I was actually on, a, on another podcast the other day and I, and I said, uh, and I mentioned Sia and I just said Sia and I think um, some of the people were thinking I was talking about Sia Kulisi mm. and I corrected them by saying Sia Masuk and I got a yeah. lot of laughing faces. They probably <laughs> think I was joking, but yeah. hopefully the people will start realizing now uh, what a special player he is. Yeah. Um, he's a, he puts his body on the line, he's a warrior. Um, and I mean, that's, that's what you want in a, in a team. You want a guy who, who can take you forward, good kicking that game, good at goal kicking. Um, he's not scared and yeah, he's just been incredible. And I think you're right here, but when you're in the tight five, when you have a backline player, especially a general number at number 10, who's putting his body on the line, it just sparks something um, in the forward pack, doesn't it? Huh? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, speaking of, of, of the tight five, you've been known as an enforcer. But lately, and I'll say lately, but I don't want to get into trouble with you. We've called it 24 months, about two years or so. You've been playing a very skillful game, you know. Um, we've seen you take a ball under the high ball, running onto it like a winger. The offloads have been coming off that um, incredible paw um, against France. You know, you're just playing, um, you're really good in the loose as well. Is it something that you've changed in your game? It's sort of like a cyborg, from a lock to a lock, you know. You get specialist four locks, specialist five locks. You're sort of really becoming more and more skillful. Well, let me say, maybe it's always been like that, but you find yourself in those positions and you're on fire. Yeah, um, <laughs> difficult, one, difficult one to answer. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we just we just obviously try to, to keep on improving as players. Um, you can't be a, a one-trick pony. And mm. I mean, yeah, any skills that you, you can learn or get better at, we, we, I think we, we all try. Uh, sometimes it comes off and sometimes it doesn't. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I can say. <laughs> yeah, that's what, he, that's what the, the number four lock who's playing, similar to a number five lately, cyborg-like. It's been fantastic to watch. How important uh, is the management for a side that's had so many new faces coming in? It seems like they've got it right, you know. They finally, all the new faces seem to be happy. The, the brand of rugby you're playing seems to be incredible and the way the team is handling pressure is great. John Plumtree, Joey Mongalo, how important were those um, I could say coaching staff members um, in terms of the success of this shark side. 
Yeah, and that's, that's the thing, when you, when you come into a new um, environment, like the coaches have, I mean, it's, it's not going to change overnight. You probably need a couple of months for, for everyone to, to buy into your plan. And I think that that is starting to happen. Uh, guys are buying into the plan. Um, once you get victories, you, then you start believing in that plan. And, mm. and I, yeah, hopefully we're there. Hopefully it will go even better next season, because the season hasn't been great. Um, but it is, let's say the latter part of the season was, was much more successful than the start. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, Plum is, uh, yeah, we, we all like him. Uh, or I think we all like him. Yeah. Uh, he's a great coach, great man. And, and I mean, so is his assistant coaches. I mean, Waza and Philip and mm. Joey and Dave. And I hope I'm not forgetting about someone, but um, yeah, they, they all bring their part and they, yeah, they, they're great to work with. Yeah, Jimmy Wright still being hectic there in, in the gym over there. One of, one yeah, of, one Jimmy, of the most Jimmy experienced guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, unbelievable to work with them. Uh, they, they condition their coaches, the soul of the team. Uh, they they mm. bring the vibe and yeah, we've mm. got two, two great guys there. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, yeah, man, thank you so much for joining me. What a stadium, um, facilities are great. The vibe here is just sensational. Great to hear um, you and your family have moved and are happy here in Durban. It's showing on the field that you're comfortable, you know. And um, great to hear as well about your teammates, you know what I mean, and the coaching staff. And all the best for a historic um, Challenge Cup final. Although you'll be at Tottenham Stadium out in, in London, we'll be with you. And I'm sure there'll be some South Africans out there as well. Um, if, you, if there's anything you want to share with the, the folk of London to, to get out to the stadiums, please do, you know. Otherwise, thank you so much. Yeah, but, yeah. No, cool. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. Have a lacquer one. Thanks, man. Thanks.